And let's bring in ABC News contributor and chief innovation officer for the Boston Children's Hospital, epidemiologist Dr. John Brownstein, for more on this. Dr. Brownstein, what more do we know about this new Omicron subvariant and how concerned should we be? Yeah, well, good morning, Diane. I know we're talking about another Omicron subvariant. We've been doing this for many months now. BA5, it accounts for over half the cases now, and it's out-competing other variants. And there's a few reasons for that. It has accumulated a lot of mutations of the spike protein, which makes it more capable of evading immunity from prior infections. And so this issue is that your immunity is waning over time, but also these new variants have a growth advantage. And so what it means is that even if you had a previous infection with Omicron or Alpha or Delta, it still means that you could be infected with this new variant. And so this BA5, it can spread quickly. It can do so even if you're vaccinated or have prior infection. But the good news is that it does not seem to cause more severe illness and that having that background immunity from vaccination is still important to protecting you against severe consequences of this virus. Now, Dr. Brownstein, with this virus constantly mutating, is herd immunity still possible? Well, we've been talking about herd immunity for over two years, and I just think we, we've got to really stop the conversation. I think it's not going to be achievable. We're in this race between vaccines and variants, and that's going to continue. And you're seeing this virus evolve quicker and quicker, and we'll probably see another variant in the fall. So the main question really is, can we avert really serious outcomes like deaths and hospitalizations? We still have this concern about long COVID, but ultimately we're going to have to keep trying to play this cat and mouse game with variants. So this is why we're seeing these new and improved vaccines. We'll probably have a bivalent vaccine in the fall that's better matched to BA4 or 5. But yes, I think herd immunity is just not something that's on the table. I and mean, then very similar to flu seasons, really. Uh, Dr. Brownstein, President Biden has secured 3.2 million doses of the Novavax vaccine, a vaccine which would give people an alternate option to mRNA vaccines like Pfizer and Moderna. Now, according to the CDC, more than 71 million Americans still have not gotten their first COVID-19 shot. So what kind of an impact do you think having this other type of vaccine, if it is approved by the FDA, what kind of an impact do you think that would have on that? You know, I wish I could tell you that I think this would make a difference for those 71 million Americans, but unfortunately, I just think it's going to be challenging. This is a different type of vaccine. It's a two-dose protein vaccine, and many people were waiting for a vaccine that was not mRNA. So it will make a difference for some people, and especially as we see J&J sunsetting, this vaccine will be this important fourth option. But I think it's going to be a problem to get those people that are still hesitant onto this new vaccine, especially now that we're having, as we talked about, new variants that are emerging. This Novavax is not necessarily well matched to what we're seeing emerge with BA4 or 5, whatever we're going to see in the fall. So I think it's going to be tricky. I would love to say that, you know, this vaccine will make a difference. It may make a difference for a few, but not, it won't cover the amount of ground that we need to cover. And finally, Dr. Bronson, New York City is now recommending masking indoors again. Uh, how much would that realistically slow down the spread of these new subvariants? And do you think we could see other cities following suit? Yeah, you know, of course, nobody wants to hear about mask mandates coming back again. I, I get it. You know, people are tired of them. We've been dealing with them for over two years. But the reality is we know that masking a community can drive down transmission. And when we have a very transmissible variant like BA5, adding a mask, especially in indoor gatherings with lots of people, can make a difference. We're going to have to see how BA5 plays out, especially whether that it contributes to increase in hospitalizations and deaths. But I do think likely, as what we see in the fall, take you know previously last year, I think it's possible we'll see other cities take on masking in very specific scenarios where it can make a difference to reduce transmission. Of course, you can always wear a mask to help reduce your own risk. That's always an option, and, and people should consider that depending on their own risk profile and those of their families. All right, Dr. John Brownstein, always great to have you. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.